the angel of the Lord announced unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. For forth we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel to the Virgin Mary, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. In the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God our Heavenly Father to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins so that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins for our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands mold the dry land. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him and sing praises to him. And speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord in his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done. His wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Jacob, his servant. O children of Jacob, his chosen. Then he called for a famine in the land and destroyed the supply of bread. He sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They bruised his feet in fetters. His neck they put in an iron collar until his prediction came to pass. The word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the people set him free. He set him as a master over his household, as a ruler over all his possessions, to instruct his creatures according to his will, and to teach his elders wisdom. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. At Horeb, the Mount of God, Elijah came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, what are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. Then Elijah heard it. He wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. Also you shall anoint Yehu of Nashimi as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha son of Shaphat of abel Mehalah as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazael Yehu will kill, and whoever escapes from the sword of Yehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave seven thousand in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, 
and every mouth that has not kissed him. Here ends the lesson. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal Father, all creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, Advocate and God. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Christians in Rome. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead, but what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one who believes with the heart and so is justified, and one who confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Here ends the lesson. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, should be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, 
and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But then he noticed the strong wind, and he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Here ends the lesson. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's Gospel has got to be one of the most famous of all the stories about Jesus. How often have you heard a joke about Jesus walking on the water? How often have you seen references to this miracle in books or movies? Walking on Water is the title of a book by Madeleine Lengel, which deals with the nature of art and its relation to faith. Walking on Water is the name of a website which, quote, seeks to reach and impact our generation's global surf community with the good news of Jesus Christ, unquote. An illusionist named Dynamo is supposed to have walked across the Thames on foot without a bridge. St. Francis de Paola is said to have performed this miracle when a boatman refused him passage. Kind of the, the epitome of the do-it-yourself mentality. Why is this miracle so fixed in the minds of Christians, in the minds of non-Christians alike? Well, I think from a purely dramatic point of view, it's got it all. There's danger, there's terror, there's furious nature, there's Peter and his impetuous desire to be like Jesus, there's irony, there's salvation, there's dominion over the natural world, there's a declaration of faith, you are the Son of God, and there's Jesus. From beginning to end, there's Jesus in his role of rabbi, in his role as a person of prayer, in his role of miracle worker, in his role as one who comes to us in unexpected ways, in his role as one of mistaken identity. It's a ghost! In his role as the one who calls us to do things we've never done before, alone in his role as the focus of our faith, in his role as Savior, in his role as one who understands our fears and frailties and doubts, but never gives up on us, in his role as Lord of creation, in his role as the Son of God. This story has so many levels, so much drama, such visceral impact on us humans living in a world where chaos can erupt at any time or place. It speaks deeply to our human condition and our desire to be able to traverse 
the chaoses of life relatively unscathed. Matthew says nothing about Jesus staying dry as he walked across the stormy chaos. Most of all, it speaks to our fears and our doubts and our hopes too. Always our hopes. And once again, I wish the Bible had emoticons. It's easy to think that Jesus is scolding Peter when he says, you have little faith, why do you doubt? But there's another way of hearing those words. You can hear Jesus saying these words with sort of a bemused and indulgent chuckle. Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? But there's also an amazing interaction. Peter asked Jesus, call me to come to you on the water. And Jesus hears Peter's desire, his wonder, his hope. And Jesus answers Peter's desire and calls him Notice that Jesus doesn't mention the wind or the waves or the others in the boat. Jesus has his eyes on Peter. And Peter has his eyes on Jesus. And as long as Peter has his eyes on Jesus, he can do what Jesus does. My dear sisters and brothers, Jesus knows our desires. He knows that whether we know it or not, we want to be like Jesus. And he calls to us through those deepest desires. He calls to us to follow our want to be like Jesus desires. He calls us to attempt things we would never believe possible. And when we falter and think, this is impossible, we begin to be overwhelmed by the impossibility of it all when we, we can be sure that the hand of the Savior is near, able to save us from the impossibility of it all and to get us back to where we can calm down and regroup with our fellow disciples. And while we're regrouping, God, Take two, and while we are regrouping, maybe we'll ponder the question. I wonder what would, what would have happened if I'd been able to tear my attention away from the wind and the waves and move my entire focus back to Jesus. And that's what discipleship is all about growing stronger and stronger in our ability to refocus our attention back to Jesus. And then, soaking wet and coughing up water, find ourselves once again doing the impossible because we are responding to his call. This is our call and this is our joy thanks be to God I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth I believe in Jesus Christ his only son our Lord he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you.
Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Grant to us, O Lord, we pray, the Spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son. Give us this day such blessing for our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. You gave them bread from heaven, alleluia, containing within itself all sweetness, alleluia. 
Blessed be God. Blessed be the holy and undivided Trinity. Blessed be God the Father, maker of heaven and earth. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection. Blessed be Jesus Christ on his throne of glory. Blessed be Jesus Christ in the sacrament of his body and blood. Blessed be God, the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life. Blessed be God and the Virgin Mary, Mother of our Lord. Blessed be God and Joseph, guardian of the incarnate Word. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Blessed be God. In union, O blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for my creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you, and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until, by your grace, I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, and dwell in my heart in the fullness of your strength. Be my wisdom and guide me in right pathways. Conform my life and my actions to the image of your holiness. And in the power of your gracious might, rule over every hostile power that threatens or disturbs the growth of your kingdom, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, our Father, who in the wonderful sacrament of the altar has left us a living memorial of the passion and resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, grant that we may ever perceive within ourselves the power of your indwelling life, and thus, by the glad outpouring of our lives and your service, we may know ourselves to be living out the fruit of his redemption who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Mary, we hail you, Mother and Queen compassionate. Mary, most humble, great and pure, we hail you. To you, we exiles, children of Eve, lift our voices. To you, we sing praises, because by the Spirit you brought forth to us the Savior. Turn now, therefore, O our intercessor, your eyes of pity and loving kindness upon us sinners. Then, at the last, when our earthly journey has been ended, show us Jesus, the blessed fruit of your womb. O gentle, O tender, O gracious Virgin Mary. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit prepared the body and soul of the glorious Virgin Mary to become a habitation for your Son. Grant that as we rejoice in her obedience, we may have the support of her loving intercession and may be delivered from our present evils and eternal death through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the divine help remain with us always and with our absent brothers and sisters. Amen.